First and foremost, I think uh, probably I'd say um, excitement. That's the first thing I think when the, the project was first mooted to, to me and to us. I think it's one of those projects which um, uh, will be able to harness quite a bit of the, the intellectual capacity that we have in the continent, which I believe has been untapped for various reasons. So I think it's a vehicle within which we can actually exploit the resources, more so in terms of innovation and creativity. Well, to be part of the Open Air Network is very important um, for me personally and my research um, partners. For me personally, I've always sought to be involved in research that makes a change. Um, re research that's important, that's going to have a benefit um, for Africa. I would like us each to finish the workshop by giving our own vision with one word. Continuity. Helpful. So, mine is democracy. <laughs> this project pretty much builds on the previous project, the African Copyright and Access to Knowledge project. We started to conceptualize a new project that to some extent builds upon what we had done in ACA2K. ACA2K was a key basis for the current project. It created the core network uh, from which Open Air is, has drawn. So I'm thinking also, given the gap we want to close in the concept of how Africa is represented in global intellectual property lawmaking process, Afrocentric intellectual property. Uh, frankly, even in its history and evolution, the concept of, as we know it, the Western concept of intellectual property was not designed uh, with African creativity and innovation in mind. And, and therefore, African narrative or experience has never been adequately represented in the evolution of intellectual property rights. And more so in the knowledge economy that we have suddenly evolved into. On the one hand, we're trying to understand what's happening right now on the ground. So with various case studies uh, from the, in the context of the creative industries, in the agricultures, uh, in the context of how uh, science and research is being done at university level and the intersection with the intellectual property regime, then we're trying to extrapolate that and imagine what would be the best world in the future and how what would be the best intellectual property regime from an African perspective. So my word is relocation. I see Africa as the center of innovation, IP, everybody rushing to Africa and everybody saying I want to be there. Taking the research further, working towards outreach and working with policy um, leaders, that for me is quite important and I think that not many academics have that opportunity so it's, it's, it's an immense opportunity for me. So a project of this nature that seeks to mobilize African resource, African narrative, African interest in the global intellectual property lawmaking and policy to, to identify the gaps is, is definitely a well-conceived project. It's in an urgent need for, for, for serious undertaking. Because I think what has been happening in the last 10 years is more so to do with capacity building. So it's time to actually see what that capacity that has been built can be able to contribute in terms of uh, development, in terms of you know, just moving the continent forward. This is it's, it's probably the only uh, significant network of researchers on intellectual property in Africa. Um, and so being part of it uh, is of course a great privilege and uh, an opportunity to learn and to network with uh, researchers working on different things. This is a privilege actually, so it would be very nice to capitalize on that and so be sustainable beyond the project. So commitment is the most important thing and uh, trust of course. And I think working together, I mean this may sound cliche, but where the whole is more than the sum of the parts. And I, I really believe in this, the networking effect, where the benefit is really more, it's a collective benefit rather than just being divided to smaller parts. Mm -hmm.